some progressions that you can do on these simple monkey bars, right? And if we start at the most lowest level, we're asking a student to just dead hang on it to make sure they have the grip strength to not slip off as soon as they try and make a move. And so like to give them the, the mental support if they're scared, which I've seen adults scared of taking a hand off and making a move, even when their feet are this far off the ground. I've seen multiple adults afraid to take one move with their hand. So we can support by getting our hands under their ribs and be like, I got you, come on, let's, let's just go. And okay, so then they're matching. And then eventually they're brachiating through, they're skipping past, they're not matching. And then maybe they're skipping a whole bar. So there's these little progressions, but it's also how do they go across the bar? They could also try and go backwards. They could also try sideways to make sure they're aware, even when they're going just forwards. Where are their hands? Because sometimes somebody's going across and they do this. And then they're like, oh, there's nowhere for my hand. Because they're not keeping a straight line. So pay attention to their body swing. Pay attention to like where their hands are going on the bar. So they always have room because they're thinking ahead to make sure there's room on these. Because if we get them that aware of where their hand position is, well, it's gonna make it a lot easier when they try and do the same thing on the rings and there's like half as much space. Because if you've noticed sometimes kids, they put their, their hand on top of their other hand with the rings or on the, the ninja grips and stuff. And sometimes they wanna get that right hand out and their left hand's on top of it and they can't. And so then they gotta know to like turn their body and turn their shoulder because their left hand is free and they can do that or if they wanted the right hand free, we'll reach left first and then reach right so your right can be free. So we can, we can progress forwards, backwards, sideways. That's all eight feet. Well, another progression is distance. So we can go 16 feet, which is down and back, which now you have to kind of work on that sideways anyway because you got to work on turning around. And so if we're coaching someone on how to turn around and I'm coming up on this last bar, how do I place my hand? Yeah, come through backwards. We've already completed half the turn. As we th swing through here, regain control, and then turn that hand, and then we're good to go. Um, <clears throat> when they're doing that turnaround, what we talked about, especially a more spacious bar that works, but this can work totally fine, is doing a full 360, just to get them comfortable with that turnaround. That can be something we can do. And then the next level of progression that we talked about last night and that we kind of covered over there but can be done here too is cliffhanger. They can come to the I'd outside. I'd say if the rings are the easiest, you're doing 30 seconds here, 20 seconds here, and 10 seconds here. And you're doing two sets of that, which means you're doing a total of one minute hanging, 40 seconds hanging, and 20 seconds hanging over the next 10 minutes, right? So like you could set your timer on your phone. You could watch this and know that you're gonna be here with your kids for 10 minutes, having them work on this, but their hands are gonna get tired. So now have them do some runs on the log and a balance course in the slide in between sets. So they're kind of running around and doing that stuff, but then, all right, you're back here and you're hanging. So hanging is one thing. What else could they do besides just hanging to further utilize this space? Like, What's the diverse array of ways that you can use this to challenge them and be creative and not just be like, you're just hanging. One thing the little guys really like is if I start them, either they start on the monkey bars. Let me bars. recap what you said. Going across the monkey bars and to the cliffhanger and back to the monkey bars is transferring from one obstacle to another. And that's a good skill to learn because there are different types of surfaces that you have to grab and different ways that you have to move and stretch your body out and use your shoulders and your whole body in different ways and incorporate more muscles and able to do that task. And so we could do the same thing, right? It could be go from the ledge, get onto the rings, get to the cannonballs, get to the, the, the cones and come back, right? It could, be, it could be that if you have kids that are good enough to make it out there and back. Um, it could be get onto one and just transfer to another. And it could be from cannonball to cannonball or ring to cannonball or cannonball to ring or cone to cannon. Like it could be any combination. Um, you could even have kids work on holding different, different holds. Behind bumping is 
if I'm hanging full weight, like my feet are not on the ground, I'm hanging here, and I simply let go of one to come on to the other, what's happening in that process? Like, think about, I'm hanging, and I take one hand off and go move it to the other side. What happens? So all your weight goes to one. Yeah. One, and then you have, you're going to be hanging. So you have to bring up again. So you're using more muscles and different muscles than you were before. And you have to find that again, because I see a lot of kids come. They're just trying to just going for it. You're saying all the right things, but let me explain it a little bit more. So you see how difficult they make it on themselves if they don't do this correctly. So when, if you do that well enough and then you get a nice quick move, you're hanging on one hand for a smaller fraction of time, which makes it much more likely that you're gonna get through. And so let's say I'm on this and I want my right hand to be reaching first. Well, I don't want this. I wanna make sure that right hand is free. And then let's say I wanna get my left hand onto that other one. So if I pull here and reach, now I can turn and throw. And now I've got my left shoulder forward so I can pull and reach and turn and throw. And if I wanted my right one on the next one, I can pull and reach. And so I'm turning my body and my shoulders with that pull so that I keep setting myself up to meander through each hold. Start with just trying to get a student to go from one to the Start other. Start with the easiest possible holds for them to practice that, and it can be going back and forth, and then go with an easy hold and the next easiest hold, and you're gonna find it's gonna be bananas, rings, cannonballs, and any kind of horizontal hold that we have. Like the, um, the orange magnetic things, which they're on camera right now, they're all the way against the wall over there. Those are actually very easy for kids to use too for this technique. So if we use a combination of like cannonballs, rings, and those, kids can work on that. And so that's what I call the bump technique. You're pulling, you're kipping, and you're making that quick move. We gotta get them, like this is a good thing to potentially work on improving hand-eye coordination with ball catching first, because otherwise they miss the ring. They don't get their hand in there. If you're having them do this today, and you, uh, let, let's say we're doing the, the bounce off the BOSU 2 one, and some kid just isn't getting it. Let's say we're using these two. What do you do? Can't get it. You, 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 you're trying to get them to bounce from this and get onto this and get onto this. Five seconds each. Can't do it though. What you get? You can start them off on one and maybe they're too short so you get a strap and you lower it down so that they don't have to bounce up at all. Yeah, that's, that's one way. What else could you do? We gotta make it easier for them. They're not using full weight. Yeah. To explain, <laughs> but like, I do something in the fitness world that I call cheater pull-ups. And cheater pull-ups are, your feet are on the ground the whole time. So if you weigh 100 pounds and your arms are only strong enough to pull 50 pounds, then how much should your legs be assisting you? The other 50 pounds. And so like to try and explain, like don't use 70 pounds with your legs because now you're not gonna get much out of your arms. But like to try and explain that to a kid is like, you're just dabbing your feet in the water a little bit. You just wanna have weight on your toes but not your full weight. Like, see how little weight you can put on your feet and still hold yourself up. And like see that their legs are bent a little bit. And watch how much the BOSU or whatever it is they're standing on is compressing. Another video I posted recently was a coach of ours from a couple of years ago having a girl Lachey up 
to a wing nut. So she was going up like three feet, swinging off of something else. And so, did you happen to see that one? It was a short. So I'll, I'll put all of these into a, a thing for you guys and send it. But so he's there, she's building up her swing. He's following her with her hand for like three swings. He's like, you're ready, let's go. And then she went and like his hands, instead of just the one hand on the back at first, cause this one would be in the way. He didn't put this one out until she actually went. And it just came right alongside her ribs and followed her up. And it was like the lightest touch that he could possibly do to her to make sure she couldn't fall backwards. And boom, she nailed it. And then he backed off, hold on. And she swung Again, off. The camera stopped. So if, if they do actually try, they don't have enough confidence in themselves to really go for it. They don't fully try. And so then they definitely don't make it. And then they get discouraged that they didn't make it. And then they're less likely to want to try the next time and the next time. And it can be this downward spiral. So we want to set it up easier first and then make it more challenging as they get better and better. And uh, gosh, what was it? Yesterday I was training um, Ethan. And he has a, a harder time keeping up with Liam and Meyer, right? And, and uh, we were doing laches off of the flying ape hanger into the special delivery. We were going for the mouth. So we were going for fingers in the mouth. I was like, do not grab anything else. It does not count if you grab those outside handles. 